Few antique sewing machines can compete with the elegant lines of an American Model 1. This particular example was made in 1875 by the American Buttonhole, Overseeming, and Sewing Machine Company of Philadelphia. Here she's mounted on a box for convenient transportation, tabletop use with a hand crank, and display on a shelf. But where she really stands out is mounted on a treadle. Where her low profile, the graceful curve of her upper arm, and the low slung main wheel give her a streamlined look reminiscent of the very best Ferraris of the 1960s. Before showing her an operation, you might be interested to hear that this machine's been hiding a mystery for 144 years. Almost invisible behind the needle drive arm are two letters cast into the very body of the machine. Removing the arm discloses what they are. A cursive G and R. Parts of this R can be seen in various drawings and advertisements from the time. The mystery is that although I've researched many of the company's histories, none of them mention any person or location with the initials G and R. It's a real mystery why so much care was put into making these letters a permanent part of the machine. If you happen to know what these letters stand for, please let everyone else know by posting a comment to this video. Thank you. Now, let's get back to seeing how she works. Threading is simple. Guide the thread from the spool through this pigtail up and around the tensioner, down to this hook, under and through it, up to the take-up arm, down to a very tiny thread guide attached to the bottom of the needle holder, and then down to the needle and threading it from left to right. I use a Boyle number 12 needle with the flat facing to the right, but I've heard any 15-1 needle works as well. This knob sets the thread tension. Screw it to the right to increase and left to decrease the tension. This lever adjusts the stitch length. Moving it forward reduces it to as little as 24 stitches per inch. Moving it towards the rear increases it to a maximum of about 8 stitches per inch. This machine seems happiest running in the middle at about 12 stitches per inch. This adjustment is very nonlinear. Moving it from the far rear to the middle changes the stitch length very slowly, but once you get past the halfway point, it quickly increases to the maximum. This makes consistently setting short stitch lengths tricky. The shuttle moves in an arc, so technically this is a vibrating shuttle machine. To remove the shuttle, move, move it to its lowest point, and then push this lever all the way back, and then I find using a, a little magnet on a stick helps get it out. And there is your shuttle. The bobbin is this very tiny little guy. To fill the bobbin, push it onto the shaft of the bobbin winder, rotate the winder forward so it makes contact with the main wheel, and then guiding the thread from the spool, wind the thread up. Once the bobbin is filled, place it back into the shuttle, with the thread coming off the bottom, and you'll find there's a, a little slot right under that finger. Get the thread through that slot, and it'll come up and out of that hole. And that's it. Uh, this little screw here is the shuttle tension adjuster. It tightens a little spring that rubs against the thread. All we have to do now is place it back into the machine and we can start sewing. The top of the drive wheel rotates away from the sewer. What I've found is that this American Model 1 is extremely reliable. It catches the bobbin thread every time without tangling, sews a tight lock stitch, and in all the time I've used it, has never dropped a single stitch. Combine all that with an elegant appearance, and it's a real winner in any collection. To see all the machines in my wife's and my collection, 
please visit our main website at waynesdissandat.com. And once again, thanks for watching.